Coming to you live from the palatial studios of PBJ Productions. Welcome to Patrick and BJ Talk Real Estate, where we talk about life, the universe, and everything as it relates to real estate. Hey everybody, it's BJ. And Patrick. And we're back talking all things real estate. And today uh, we're gonna talk about an article in the Canadian press uh, specifically addressing what the real estate market has done since the start of 2024. So let me read the headline. Uh, Home sales surge in Canada's major cities to start the year. Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary see over 30% gains. So we're just rolling into March. Like we're shooting at the end of February. Mm -hmm. By the time this video comes out, it's going to be sometime in March. <clears throat> so just to give you some context. And what was last year? Last year, we've pretty much had like a record low uh, volume of sales pretty much across the country. Yeah. There might be some like, uh, you know, not exactly accurate to that statement, but a generalization that our, our sales were low everywhere. And I think that was affected mostly not by foreign buyer ban, not by some other legislation. It's interest rates. Interest rates. That's 100%. it. All right. 100%. Let's see what we got here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so... Um, the start of the year has shown signs of a rebound in some major housing markets, including the greater Toronto area where home sales soared 37% in January compared with the same month a year ago. So that's one. Well, well, uh, I'll, stop, I'll stop you right there. Okay. Uh, and Toronto is still um, low on inventory, uh, right. it, even though sales are up. Single family homes, I, I remember the January uh, numbers. January numbers for single family homes were up like 1.6%, like barely over the January beforehand, okay. where condos, townhouses, and attached homes were all down by like 0.5 yeah. of a percent, yeah. of like less than a percent sure. down. So, it's, right. you know, we could almost call that steady, even if a one, one point and one and a half percent increase on single family detached. Yeah. yeah. So we'll call that a flat market over the okay. year, right? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, just certainly, to, just to throw some context yeah. on top of that, and certainly for us to here, I, I would say if we looked at it, it's a flat year. It's pretty much a flat year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, other local real estate boards have also reported year-over-year -year increases in home sales activity last month. Vancouver sales jumped by thirty-eight point five percent, Calgary by thirty-seven point seven percent, and Montreal uh, at eighteen percent. Clearly, the mood in the market is starting to improve, said Benjamin Tal, Deputy Chief Economist at CIBC Capital Markets. The market is starting to internalize that interest rates have peaked. In other words, people are coming to the realization, the market is coming to the realization, okay, we've stopped going up with the interest rates. So the and sentiment now, is... Now it's time to step into the market again. Yeah. Um, because we know here and this will apply to any market i think but we know especially how it operates in victoria that when interest rates come down housing prices will go up yes yes and 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 that's going to vary from market to market depending on how much demand there is and yeah. uh and supply constraints yeah um so here's here's another comment made by benjamin tal he said, the main outstanding question is whether sellers will respond to renewed demand. If the housing market sees improvement in the number of new listings, this would prevent prices from rising too quickly over the next six months. So now we come back to the inventory issue, which we've talked about quite a bit. Yeah, that's an interesting statement to make, right? So if we're short on inventory, it's going to continue to put pressure on prices, even if we had like a medium amount of inventory, let's say if it's on a 10 year average, yeah. then, you know, it might just keep prices fairly the same, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. until we're o like oversupplied a little bit, right? Yeah. At some point we're gonna see oversupplied. Uh, example of being oversupplied, I'm gonna rewind to like 2009. Okay. We had 5,000 listings. And we were selling 450 to 500 <clears throat> per month, right? So we had an absorption rate of 10%. Yeah. We had 10 months of inventory, right? Right. Where now it's like we have 2,600 or 2,500 or whatever it is yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, so we have a clear, this is for the Victoria market. There's a ways to go. Like we could be at 3,500 and still feel like we're in short supply. Yeah, for sure. 
So, you know, yep. at what point do we start to feel balanced where this statement um, starts to see truth in the, in the results of the market? Yeah, so here's something Anyhow. to go with that. Uh, predictions are that once the Bank of Canada starts cutting its key rate from the current five year, uh, pardon me, current 5% level, likely in the second half of 2024, uh, there more competition between buyers amid constrained supply will push the prices higher. Mm. There we go. Right. That's, I think, what we just talked about. Even the promise of rates coming down in the near future has definitely helped people feel more comfortable taking action. I think the big concern is if you're going to jump into buying a house is you want to feel confident that like, you know, you paid you paid a million dollars for it. You don't want it to be worth nine hundred fifty thousand dollars in six months from then. So I think that's some of the even if you're not selling, you're you don't want to be buying at the height, knowing that it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. I think having that confidence, like okay, well, if interest rates are going to go down, that's going to like more demand, that's going to increase, that's going to provide security for people. At least knowing that they're not losing value on their home. Yeah, and people will start buying. Yeah, I think I think that's a major component of, sure. a, of, yeah. of positive sentiment. Absolutely. Um, so w I'm going to read one last part here and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay. But um, talking about the, the market and new listings. Okay. New listings have also lagged behind sales in Vancouver where they were 9.1% below the 10 year seasonal average last month and in Calgary where inventory remains near record lows. So you have you're in a situation where interest rates are about to come down and demand and inventory is low and the demand is about to step up when there's people on the, on the sidelines basically saying, okay, when the first bump comes, we're in. Maybe not in a huge rush, but it, it will, I think it'll trickle the, uh, the people from the sidelines. Sure. Ah, the people in the stands to get on the court. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we referenced in, in these articles, they referenced some big markets. So Toronto, Vancouver, uh, Montreal, uh, yeah. and Calgary. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about Victoria and the greater Victoria area, we always eventually feel the repercussions from Vancouver. That's, that's just the pattern. Yeah. Right. So um, you're, you know, the sur sur surrounding area around Toronto, the surrounding area around Montreal, the surrounding area around Calgary. There's not much around Calgary. It's but, and but they're all going to feel that as well. And it's interesting to just to know, as we are an outside outlying area from Vancouver, as we get affected when the Vancouver market heats up, yeah. out, the outside areas heat up just like you said. It takes yeah. time. There's a delay on that. Yeah. And the reverse is true as well. Mm -hmm. When the outlying areas start to slow down, yeah. we'll eventually see Vancouver's market slow down. Yeah. So just sure. to throw that out yeah. there as, for context. So um, what does that mean for you as the, if you're a homeowner, um, then you're thinking about selling, then you know, you're, you have to figure out and balance the, okay, the, the selling and the buying and what's happening with the price of, of potentially making more, that's great, but then I'm gonna have to pay more and have more, uh, go back to 2022, where you basically had to walk into property and say, okay, we'll, we're, we'll write an offer right now. And without subjects, even even with our um, our home buyer rescission period right. here in BC, right? You know that's one sort of um, uh, safety mechanism, as the, I guess they would call it for consumer pr protection. Um, we'll see how that fares in the if if the market goes off off the handles again. Yeah. But do you want to do you want to be selling during that time? when there's a lot of pressure, that fear of missing out. Yeah. That's a big problem when that, yeah. when that was going on, right? Yeah. Uh, on an inability to do home inspections <clears throat> and all the other things. There was a number of reasons it wasn't the best situation. It wasn't ideal, yeah. yeah for sure. So, uh, you know, a balanced market is <laughs> really the ideal market for everybody. As yeah. a, you know, sellers can say, well, I want a seller's market. Well, that's fine, but you're still gonna have to buy a home at some point. That's right. Um, the buyers, you know, might say, "Well, I want a buyer's market," but you may have to sell your home to go buy the next home. So, it, it right. you know, balanced market is what works the best. But what we're seeing and what everybody is projecting is that there's going to be uh, a significant rebound in the market as we go into 2024. And it's really forget about the foreign buyers ban. Forget about 
um, the flipping tax and all of these things. It really comes down to inventory and demand. And once the interest rates move, yeah. the demand, like you said, people on the sidelines are going to step in and the inventory hasn't, hasn't changed. I think it's a funny thing that, that your statement was very logical when it's like, you know, that uh, during um, buyers want to buy when it's a buyer's market, mm -hmm. sellers want to sell when it's a seller's market, right? Even though the seller has to be in the buyer's shoes. Sure. The, th the thing is like, it's, it's very, um, it's, but it's an emotional decision. People have the most amount of fear in purchasing a home when it's a buyer's market because sell houses are not selling. Yeah. When that's like, take the emotion out of it and put your logical statements that you just did and wait a minute, that's probably the best time. You have the most amount of flexibility on the purchase, sure. repairs, negotiating, yeah. everything. <clears throat> or you're reacting in a, because everybody else is buying, you better buy. Right. And now you don't have the ability to negotiate, get repairs or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So just putting it out there, I know still people will buy and people will sell when it's the right time to sure. sell and buy anyways, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. So. So anyway, so that's what we've got in terms of that article and we'll <clears throat> hit a few other ones here. Um, if you have any questions or you have some thoughts about that, feel free to put it in the comments. I, I think, you know, we've said this before, we, we love to, to see your comments and get your feedback and input. We just ask that, uh, you know, we, we keep everything civil and if you uh, disagree or agree, still be civil about it. And that's if you, cool. yeah, and if you have, some reasoning behind what you think like we like stats we like information that has something behind it so yeah very welcome to that yeah so certainly put that in there if you haven't please take a minute subscribe to our channel we do put out uh, four or five episodes every week so you want to make sure that you don't miss anything and the subscription will make sure that you're notified when we put something out and, uh, and yeah if you're thinking about buying or selling uh, real estate in the Victoria Southern Vancouver Island or even in, in mid, mid Island we can help you with that uh, our contact information is in the description below um, or if you just need a second opinion on what's going on sure yeah. uh, maybe to give yourself some more data more context we'd be happy to help you with that yeah um, so until next time, we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you.